sure if someone were to look inside my window while I'm playing, they probably would have no idea what's going on in here. To watch a theremin being played looks really strange. <laughs> My name's Pamela Stickney, and uh, one of the instruments I love to play is the theremin. <laughs> like, what the hell was that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so the theremin's a synthesizer, and it's a synthesizer that's not controlled with the use of a keyboard like a piano. I'm controlling the pitches with my left hand, and this hand is just the articulation hand, the volume. It's controlled without any physical contact. And you can make it like a bird. <laughs> the really big challenge with the instrument is it's reacting not just to my hands and how they're moving and my fingers. It's sensitive as well you know, to my whole body. I've recorded on an album of David Burns, Grace Jones, the Indigo Girls. It's such a new instrument still that there's nobody who's going to stand there and say, you're not doing it the way it's supposed to be done. I don't think there's anything else like it. It doesn't relate to anything else I've ever played. <laughs> I'm the first woman to graduate with a doctorate from Juilliard, and now I play the toy piano. Life works in mysterious ways. I have transformed the toy piano into a real instrument. To play the toy piano well, you have to practice on it every bit as hard as you would on a normal piano. In fact, I think you have to work even harder because the action is so primitive. You can make it sound beautiful. You can make it sound convincing. It's a bit like going down the rabbit hole and taking your audience with you way back down this avenue to your childhood days. Once a skeptical person comes to a toy piano concert that I give, I'm able to turn him around. It's a whole extended family now of people into toy pianos. It's a fearless little band who are willing to stick their necks out for toys. See page. See page play. Play page pl What the hell is page playing? This is an orchestra comprised entirely of flutes. This works because flutes can cover the entire range of an orchestra on their own. From the piccolo at the top, all the way to the double contrabass flute down at the bottom. Very cool. And there's Paige playing. You know, back from the intro. I'm Paige Long and I'm a professional flutist. Wait, flutist or flautist? I like flutist. She's one of a handful of people playing the three largest flutes in the flute family. The contrabass flute, the subcontrabass flute, and the double contrabass flute. 
let's learn about big flutes. In its case, the double contrabass flute weighs approximately 30 pounds. It stands over eight feet tall, and it's 22 feet of tubing. The subcontrabass flute in G has 11 feet of tubing, and the contrabass in C has nine feet of tubing. So, how does one play an instrument with 22 feet of tubing? For these lower flutes, it's a whole different technique. Your embouchure is looser. New word. Embouchure. 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 Embouchure is the way you shape your mouth to make a sound on the flute. Your mouth is looser, bigger, takes a lot more air and a lot more support. I feel like I've run a 10K when I'm done with a concert. Because it's hard to get a clean, low sound? They actually play the lowest possible notes of an orchestral instrument. Say, lowest of any orchestral instrument? Now what does that mean? Hey guys, can you help us out here? Well, all right. Ready, boys? The double contrabass flute goes low. Lower than any instrument can go. Lower than the string bass, that big old guy. He makes that bass line fly. And what's next? It's the sub contrabass flute. Hit it. Another big flute sounds like a bassoon. The sub contrabass can carry a tune. The contrabass flute is the smallest fellow. It sounds just like a cello. Wow, thanks. Now I understand. So Paige, what do you like about these giant flutes? In the land of flutes, they're like the subculture of the flute community. We provide a role that the concert flute cannot. It all checks out. Paige, play us out. To play the instrument that is utilizing our gentle earth, it's like you are becoming one with the instrument in a very true way. You just sit and go, yes. We're looking at the great stalag pipe organ of the Luray Caverns in Luray, Virginia. When I press a key, it sends an electrical pulse up to a rubber-tipped mallet, which strikes the stalactite, causing it to vibrate and producing an incredibly beautiful musical tone. The area that the strikers cover is roughly three and a half acres, which then makes it literally the world's largest musical instrument. It is a very gentle sound, um, very peaceful. There's only one like it in the world. And it's something incredibly different and wonderfully beautiful. I always thought, you know, a snowshoe would really make a great cello. A wooden chair back makes a cool guitar body. But it turns out that one of my most playable instruments is, is a golf club. I'm seeing that transformative quality in my head all the time. What can I say? I'm attracted to trash. I don't know why. <laughs> Check out the Jimi Hendrix of shovels. It's a guitar made up of lots of well, junk. He even plays his zipper. From Brooklyn, New York, please welcome Ken Butler. My name is Ken Butler. I'm an artist and musician and known for building my own experimental instruments. Since 1978, I, I think I've made around 400 instruments. This whole thing started for me when I was in my basement in Portland, Oregon, and I saw a rusty old beat-up hatchet. Put two strings and two tuning pegs on it, plugged it into my guitar amp, and was quite stunned that it actually sounded like a horrible violin. The Axe violin was the first time that somebody said, 
That's a cool idea. If I go walking around the neighborhood, everywhere you look, you see such amazing conglomerations of potential sculpture. There's crutches, tennis rackets, parts of furniture. Boom, I'm, I'm right there with that. You know, when I build stringed instruments, really just need three things. The head, the neck, and the body. A spoon has that parameter. A key looks like a guitar. It has, you know, and then there's the little body. This is from a uh, very inexpensive mandolin. Of course, some of the things become crazy Baroque assemblages of multiple, multiple necks. It's ridiculous, but that's how it works. My shovel guitar, I guess it's a small snow shovel. It's just a quirky object and it sounds unbelievably beautiful. The qualities and character that the golf club has is amazing. There's one that's made from a beach paddle that has a, a ukulele neck and a cane. Sometimes people think my intention is humor. It's not. I think it's surprising to people that I can generate genuine emotion and meaning and real music on something as ridiculous as a hockey stick or a tennis racket or a broom or a shovel or a golf club. At the real core of, of what I'm doing, it's to communicate to other people that the things right around them can be magical and transformative and even spiritual. Who knows, if, if I hadn't found that axe, what would have happened? <laughs>